So, as Mark said, I'm Alastair Green, a director of ESP Consulting. We're a niche consultancy practice that focus on energy strategy and policy. I and my th two partners all actually met in the energy strategy and policy team at Coopers and Librand and went through into PwC. And all of us have actually worked in and around doing this type of thing for 20 plus years. I actually want to look mainly at what could happen to the retail market for electricity and how that paradigm could shift. Um, because the title of my energy is The New Energy Market. And over the next few minutes, I want to look at that market and what it could be, then consider what would actually make this change happen, if it is going to happen. And the implications of, of how that change could happen for those of you in this room who might be looking for some growth. I've left a slot in there for an afterthought, but given we're running behind, I might not get to that. If we're looking at a change in this industry, I believe it has a potential to be as dramatic as that we've seen over recent years in mobile telephony. At present, a good energy supplier is measured on price, <coughs> the accuracy of billing, and its customer service. A few years ago, what we wanted out of a phone was for it to be small, reliable, and have a long battery life. And for most of us, that meant the phone we were carrying in our pocket said Nokia on the front. If you look now, the phone has a far greater importance in our life. It must do social networking, it must do gaming, it must do email. And quite often, it's not a very good phone. The consequence of that has been the Nokia share price, as shown on this graph, has crashed. Nokia were caught on the hop. Nokia was left behind this change and this is showing the impact that happened on its, on its price. The change in the energy market could be as dramatic with customers looking for additional things to just electricity coming down a wire. Clearly this creates different roles in the industry which some of, the, some of you here today may be looking to fulfill. Government has a role in driving this change but who thrives in this world will ultimately depend on the customer and what they want to buy. Will he look to buy additionally ser additional services through his energy supplier, or will he be happy to go into the complex world of biotech and get somebody else to, to guide him through it? Part of that's driven by what is driving the change, and why now for this change? It's 13 years ago that we first allowed customers to choose where they bought their energy. And over that time, energy companies have built an understanding of what drives customers' behaviour. Because if you're an energy retailer, one of your biggest jobs is to make sure your customer doesn't choose to go somewhere else. Generally, there's a feeling that this is driven by a combination of awareness and pain. Our customers switch to another supplier because, because they think their bill's too high and because they're actually aware they can do it. A number of people don't do it because they're not aware. Awareness at this time is actually at an all-time high. If we look at um, the media profile of energy choices to customers, I've got some slides beyond this which I'm not going to go through in the interest of time, but the press coverage this industry is getting at the moment is higher than it has ever been. Yet, if we look at the data, despite that and the fact that disposable incomes are down and energy prices are up, customer churn, i.e. the rate at which customers switch, is dropping. Now, this has told us something about the nature of the energy profile. A lot of the energy coverage we're getting at the moment is messages from the regulator and from government that energy choices are complicated and that the average customer does not understand them and cannot trust their energy company. This lack of trust actually creates an opportunity for somebody. It's actually gone against what government's trying to do, but there's, there's a clear thing here. The customer will not buy from you unless he trusts. In addition, governments and regulators are doing things that will push energy companies in the change. The following slide some, shows some more detail on that, but I'm going to skip that. But in general, at the moment, customer pain is up, 
awareness is up, the government is pushing this. So the change is likely to happen. I'm going to step through those and move on to sort of the big six. And where are the big six on this? If you do a quick review of the current offerings from the big, the big six, i.e. the main energy retailers, it would, su it would suggest they're potentially in the Nokia mindset. They don't see a change coming. With only SSE offering a microgeneration service. However, this actually masks their true concern. Public statements by both Centrica and Eon acknowledge the importance of the challenge and in Centrica's case articulates the need to move from energy supply to managing energy supply and usage. Indeed, Centrica, with its bold push on smart metering, can be seen as wanting to be the iPhone of this particular change. Others are also concerned to avoid being the Nokia of this world and are investing at this stage to acquire the competencies of those they see as potential threats. And those are mainly in understanding customers and being able to analyse them. Biggest threat they see is people like Google and Tesco's. So to round that one off and see where I am on time, the change is a change in relationship from somebody selling energy down a wire to somebody doing almost going into the home and taking responsibility for your energy bill and managing that by potentially selling you a device which to generate energy or other stuff so they say look stick with me my energy may cost more but the overall bill will be lower the conditions are there for this to happen prices are high and rising customer awareness is rising and governments and regulators are supporting this. And the big six are starting to prepare. So on that basis, I'd say the change is quite likely to happen. Now, I'd look to you for time and say, have I got time to do the afterthought or not? Can we do a couple of quick questions and take yep. advantage of your kindness to sort of get a bit closer back to time? Um, I'm going to kick off with two questions, actually, that came to me. Um, you've identified Centrica as the iPhone. Yep. Who's going to be Android? And secondly, if you're a clean tech business and you, or you're a venture fund and you've got some cash, where do you put it to take advantage of this market? Right. You, you might have to remind me of the second question. Who's going to be the Android? Who's, be, yeah. who's, the, who's the, the fast follower? There are a number of positioning to make sure they can be the fast follower, especially on, on say, the smart metering side. If you, look, if you look rationally from an, an energy supplier, at the moment they would say they compete on cost to serve. The moment it costs them around about 15 to 18 pounds a year to actually do the billing and customer service to a customer. <coughs> Putting in a meter nearly doubles that. So rational thought says if customers are not going to respond to smart meters, Centrica's just shot itself in the foot by rolling them out fast. And actually what you want to do is you want to roll them out as late as possible to keep your costs down. What most, what at least three companies I know are sitting on the fence. They're putting in place programs where they're going to put out meters, they're going to watch to see how customers respond to it, and they want to be in a position to put their foot on the gas if it, if it looks like Centrica is an iPhone. So at least three of those companies I know are lining up to be the Android. Now, I think the last one was... Well, if you're a venture capitalist, and there's a few distinguished ones in the audience, where do you put your money to take advantage of this? And then I'll throw it to the audience. Uh, that one, that one's very difficult. I think. Um, I, if I were looking at, if I were looking at the various technologies around and the various government incentives, um, I'd say the most likely thing that the household will take up will be a heat pump, and that's certainly within policy uh, and the thinking that's going on in the energy companies is the one which is most useful to them and makes most economic sense. Very, it's proving very difficult 
to attract the uh, attention of the investors to getting this thing going. What would you advise? Wastewater is not something I know as much about, to be it honest. Is, it's, not, it's not the favourite of the investment fraternity, but there is a very formidable one. About 400 billion US dollars have been allocated around the world to affect massive improvement in wastewater treatment in places like the Mediterranean Basin, APAC countries, Balkans, all that area. Ah, no, and, you know, um, it's not a hell of a market out there. There, are, there may be, I, I mean, in this country, Clearly, there was a there was a regulatory settlement yesterday. Well, we're talking, we're talking with, with the UK, apart from Scotland and the, is like the Isle of Man, which we've been hearing about. The UK is, is very bound by a regulatory. It is. Fix, and uh, <coughs> if you go to things like Vincent Mason's wet water rights, all you hear in there is bitching about <coughs> other companies, about regulators, all that type of thing. Maybe say, get your ticket and go to Romania or something like that. I mean, to be honest, my experience. When we were at Cooper's, we were um, the other part of our group was the water strategy team. Um, the most of the, the experience we had internationally was uh, it's still state driven, and they tend to be let on concession basis, yeah. if anything. So, uh, and again, it's the same the same driver. It's driven by the economics. Who's going to give me the best deal? <coughs> so you'd have to get to the policymaker and the buyer and say, look the best deal includes these factors, which may be, I don't know, uh, a sewage, uh, an anaerobic digester on the sewage sludge or something, and get them to value that. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just going to go to the least cost. Sorry, can, can I... That's how I hold about this part. Sorry, can we move? Um, yeah. I, was, I was interested by your focus on the, the big six. Yep. And I guess perhaps you could articulate why, in your response to who might be the next Android, it wasn't a, a good energy or a an over or something like that. You know, are, are, are the barriers to entry, the incumbency factors too high in here and this regulatory change required? Um, the, are the barriers to entry, I, mean, I, th I think without doubt there are barriers to entry in this industry. Uh, are, they, are they legitimate barriers to entry is another point. I'd potentially say yes, they are. Uh, what one typically sees with new suppliers in the industry is they tick along quite nicely until there's an energy price spike and then they all fall like dominoes. Um, because they cannot manage, they're not vertically integrated, they cannot manage the fundamental <coughs> risk of energy prices that sit behind them. Now that fundamental problem, I would expect to continue. I think there could be new entrants come in that, but, that actually split from energy, i.e. The government, it, when the government and regulator and what they've done have got the, the, the big six companies to a point where they're whipping boys and they are not trusted at the moment. There is, as someone who's tried to buy clean tech myself, it's, it's a scary market out there. There are loads of you trying to sell stuff. I don't know which of you is good, which of you is bad. I would, I'd really value a, a, a trusted advisor who can come in there and that market is there for somebody to take. Now, now if somebody can take that and bring the customer with them, I think they can then potentially bring an energy supplier along with them because there are other moves which could make the energy become, well sorry, if the big six don't respond to this, they become someone who's just competing on price and that actually undermines the barriers to entry because they will happily then sell to the person who's got the customer relationship. I think we've got, sorry, one last at the back. Yeah. Just on building on that, I mean, you talk about the need to change or the prospect of change, but, but directly following on from the last question, there's not going to be any change in that sense of all of the wholesale market is electric. Because the big six can do what they like for decades to come. A new entrant is going to be able to get to a position where they can hedge their forward purchasing of power and support the day. So unless some white light's going to come along and offer some sort of last year service that enables them to suddenly develop I'm working on reform of the wholesale market at the moment, so it's one, it's, it's an area I'm actually unable to comment on, given I'm engaged by DEC. Um, one thing I would say on that is potentially no. Some of those <coughs> things which have knocked out independent suppliers in the past have been gas price doubling on, an in, on a world basis, not, <coughs> not gaming by the UK players. 
and reforming the UK wholesale market will not ensure an unhedged supplier against a doubling in the world price of gas. Uh, the other thing I would say, though, is which was my which was my afterthought. At the moment, the the big six are not really wanting to be energy retailers. They're power generators. The reason they're in they're in retail is because when you build a power station, you've got to secure your revenue for 15 years. And you want then the best way to do that is by having a customer base. One of the reforms being talked about in energy market reform is called a capacity mechanism and a capacity payment. That potentially takes away the need to have a retail business. So it's possible you'll see these guys trying to sell. One has already tried. I personally don't think they will do it because you need 15 years finance to secure a power station. At the moment, the regulatory arrangements in this country have only lasted 10 years a time. Thank you.